Hi amigos, finally at Tawa Stack Profile. I've been playing testing for at least two months now, and I was able to take Tawas to an ARG Circuit Series event in Indianapolis this weekend, and I did very well with it. I was around 67-ish people that participated, and I was seven rounds of Swiss, best two out of three. I was able to go X1 throughout the whole day, only losing to the mayor, and I faced Overlord, Two Big Belly, ZTB, Fawas, Asha, and Vanquisher. So it was definitely a good pool of different decks and variety. It was late at the end of the Swiss rounds, so Top 8 decided to split, and I ended up being fourth place. Just like in my previous Night Rose video at the BCS in Annapolis in August 2017, this will be a much more in-depth deck profile, so let's get right into it. So with Thavas, I decided to do Bubble Edge over Metros. So what Bubble Edge does is that you put into Saw, give a unit the red skill text, where if it attacks the fourth time or more against the Vanguard, it'll draw a card. So this can get you two new cards with a restander. It can get you the third card if you use Orphea behind it too, as well. And it's not GB. So that can come up against certain matchups. Uh, Link Joker is a good example. So against Messiah, generally they don't have anything they, they can do pre-GB to lock your stuff. So if you can get the first stride, you can use Bubble Edge to explode on your first stride turn to draw a lot of advantage. Against the Chaos matchup, uh, it decided to take a little different approach because now they have Crisis. So they are a little more easier. Um, they have a more easier way to lock stuff without discarding a card like for the OG Chaos Breaker. And so what I started doing is that I would ride Grade 1, assuming that I go second, I ride Grade 1, put Bubble Edge in the front row, call Resist Unit, that's important. Melania or Orphea. So attack with Vanguard, any triggers, pass it on to this guy. And if they even damage, um, if they damage check the trigger, then you can still hit with the 12k combo. And then they'll ride to Grade 2, try to attack you, they may leave the Bubble Edge alive. It doesn't matter if they kill it or leave it alive. But the idea behind it is that your following turn, your grade two ride, you shove it into Sol, and now you're left with the resist unit only on board. And then you do your attack, get another damage in. They ride to grade three. They can't lock anything because Bubble Edge is just swooped in or it got killed by one of their attacks. So they can't really do nothing that grade three ride turn and then comes back to you on your first stride. And then you can thus go all out on your first shot on trying to get advantage with cards like Saber Flow and Sipla and so on. And leaving your board sort of empty of non-resist units and leaving the resist units there. <laughs> so that way they can't really lock units and they are forced to lock units from your hand or from your drop zone and so on. So that helps. That will give that tip out. Um, the other thing to mention is I like to call this the one piece of the Favas Trinity. <laughs> um, the thing with Thavas, when we started getting the first reveals for Supreme Ruler and Alexandros, I was very stoked that potentially Mitros might actually be a better starter this time for other than Bubble Edge. What I mean by that is that you can get a few attacks, six to eight attacks, and get Ruler Thavas easily, and it will bounce back to your hand. Of course, with the ultimate strike cost being the same card as your Vanguard, that just works out perfectly. After playtesting a bit, I noticed that it lacks hand advantage, and for me, it felt kind of cringy. <laughs> I came from Night Rose recently, and first stride, I'm able to generate a lot of advantage and pressure at the same time. Usually at the end of first stride turns, I would end my hand with at least 10 cards in my hand. 10 cards or more. And you applied some kind of Muay Thai attack pressure against your opponent. With Mitros, I noticed that you're able to get about six to eight cards at the end of your turn for your first stride, which kind of sucks, in my opinion, and you feel kind of unsafe. And Thawas does rely more on your combo pieces in your hand, where Grand Blue can discard their whole hand to guard, and then as long as they can stride next turn, they still have the turn, right? So, really thinking about it, I really wanted to turn back to some kind of dry advantage and using Bubble Edge. And there's different parts that I incorporated, and also thanks to my friends such as Dmok from the Reddit and David from Australia, um, they were also agreement that Saber Flow should be in the deck as well. So that was my argument. <laughs> 
And so with the Trinity pieces, I would call them, one being Bubble Edge, two being your draw, your sixth draw trigger lineup, and your third being the Saber Flow, you're able to give Thavas an actual hand advantage engine against other decks that just generate decks that can actually generate that much easier. We're talking about Overlord, we're talking about ZTB, we're talking about Night Rose, we're talking about all these decks, Chaos, Luard, you name it. All these top decks can end relatively with hands with 10 cards in their hand and still do pressure on first strike. So you need to compete with that. Now for the trigger lineup. The important thing to know is that I am playing six crit and six draw. I'm gonna talk about the six draw more first right now. So I call it the second piece of the Thalus Trinity. It helps with consistency throughout your early game, your mid game, and your late game. You're often enough gonna drive check your draw triggers or you're gonna damage check them. Seeing one in the early game is more likely with six draw triggers as well, and it makes a huge difference, especially going against a deck that tries to rush you. Your draw triggers help you get that plus one to either guard with it or actually get another combo piece to work with for the next turn. Thus, I have also actually had to change my play style with Thalas. I was a little aggressive before, where if I did have the title, I would usually call it through a guard and try to get three attacks. A lot of the times now realizing it is usually not worth it because one, if they get a trigger, it kind of is over. <laughs> you have no way to power up title in this deck pre-GB, so it's not worth it in that way. Um, you may want to save that title for later on, or you have other grade twos that you'd rather save. Great twos such as Saber Flow, Zipla, and Adelaide, I'd rather ride title in this case. Save those other units, and then go into my first stride and explode with Saber Flow, with Adelaide, and even Zipla, depending on what I have. So that way, I can get a solid first stride turn and generate advantage as well. And uh, also, with often enough, you will see the draw trigger consistently through your games. So that helps a lot in generating some kind of hand advantage pre-GB. And thus, when you go into first stride, you can start pushing to your hand limit from anywhere to 10 cards to 15 cards in hand. My average hand size throughout the tournament was 13 cards in hand. I just explode on first stride and at the end of the turn my opponent's like okay how many cards in hand do you have and i'm like 13 and they're like oh <laughs> you're like whoa um you know after like doing like six attacks or seven attacks depending on what you have and knowing that you have that much hand is really like whoa like since when does aqua force can generate such a big hand and with drawing so much you're able to see your combo pieces you're able to see your pgs you're able to see your heal triggers so you can G-guard, so you can guard effectively. You can um, make sure you have the combo pieces for next turn, the right ones that you want. And thus, you have greater control on what to do your next turn, where if your choices are limited, whether it's field or hand, it kind of dictated what stride you would go into. But now, generating enough hand advantage, you dictate what stride to go into. So... Now into the six crits, four pressures over the supersonic sailor. Um, people would like the supersonic sailor to get the counter charge. I get that. That was is much more counterblast heavy than it was before. But through playtesting, I'm able to moderate my counterblast usage and have gone, especially with saber flow, since it doesn't cause a counterblast. Title doesn't cause a counterblast, and those units are usually the ones I want to go off for stride, especially saber flow. So you're able to work with one or two counter blasts on first stride with an Alexandro stride. Just a command of Thalas. Um, so with the Petros, it helps actually make Saber Flow hit numbers, make it into a 12k column. You can put this in front of a Melania, and that Melania can attack from the back row using Supreme Ruler's stride skill. So then you do that 11k poke and then some other rear guard, whatever. Or you could do an Adelaide to rear guard and then poke this to Vanguard. And then Alexandros will attack the third wave, this will go into soul, get you back a card so you don't lose advantage. You get plus one in the soul, which you'll use later for Adelaide and Orphea, of course, and Gaphelia if you need to. And you'll resend Melania and the other unit at the end of the battle, and you have Melania swinging from the back row with 17k, drawing you another card, and then your other unit could be a restander, could be a saber flow, etc. So it helps make numbers in certain plays where you can hit the vanguard or you can hit regards where Melania and Saber Flow wouldn't be able to hit by themselves. 
so that helps. And having that 5k pressure as a 31k vanguard is scary when they're at 4 damage, so your opponent wants to g-guard it or pg it. So, g-guarding, you're gonna make it harder if you have a bigger number of vanguard. And that's good if they guard extra cards because 9 times out of 10, you're gonna put your triggers on your rear guards, especially rear standers, to abuse them. With the heal trigger, um, she is the generic now. If you G guard and you have another heal, you combine those two heals and counter charge or soul charge. So she is one of your main ways that you're counter charging in Talas. The other way is Plato, which is the PG. And then this will follow up with Supersonic Sailor. And the last thing you want to use to counter charge is Gaphelia. Because if you use Gaphelia, you're taking away 5k power up from an Alexandro's turn for every attack after he gives the boost. So if you have a double restander that gets the power boost, each of those attacks are now 5k less effective for that turn. And it could be game ending because that's a difference between of an extra card that your opponent would have to draw. So having the seal trigger helps a ton. <laughs> so definitely 9 times out of 10 you're going to counter charge and the rest you may want to soul charge for Orphea or for Adelaide. On to the grade 3 lineup. We have 7 grade 3s for Supreme Ruler of the Storm Thavas. This is something that Aqua Force needed for the longest time. <laughs> Especially with cards like Denial Griffin, Hatter Around, etc. The fact that you can give resist to any unit, such as Taito, Saberflow, or even Adelaide, helps a ton of your turns to actually do your turns. Whereas in the past, you would have to try to bait out a Denial Griffin or try to bait out a Hatter Around before your next turn to hopefully do your actual turn. And boy, this helped a lot. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. The other skill that it gives is that if it was a wave unit that I targeted it with, is that it'll make it a back row attacker. This could be another copy of himself. It could be a copy of Melania, it could be Sipla. Um, this is great against Gridora for Chaos, where they're locking your rearguard circles or you're locking you out of the column, and thus you'll rely on a back row circle to attack from, to get your number of battles up there. It's also convenient that you can use Bubble Edge on him as a rear guard and get the two draw off Bubble Edge from that too. So it's kind of like an Adelaide in, the, in that example or a title assault to get the benefit of the two draw from the Bubble Edge skill. Now, for the OG Thalos, I was playing two OG and one Benedict. So for the longest time, about almost a month and a half, I was playing that ratio. And just a few days before this event, which was this past weekend, I decided to take out Benedict and put in an OG Dallas back. Two reasons. Uh, I found myself no longer really using Benedict as much. I would It would end up either in my hand just to save it for later, or B, I would discard it for the cost of strat and use a 7k booster like Nikki to boost. So then I was like, okay, maybe I don't need another restander in the terms of Benedict. So then, there are matchups where the OG Thalos actually helps you out. This could be against Paladin matches, Asha, Big Belly, even Link Joker to an extent. And what I mean by that is that typically Thalos is going to attack the rear guards first with your rear guards before your vanguard attacks. And that leaves their back row open for the Thalos strike skill to pop. So you can kill starters if that's the only thing they have. You can kill important grade ones in the mid to late game or early if they call them, and that could be key. So if you keep retiring throughout those turns, your opponent may be forced to call a card, an extra card from their hand to the field to make like a good column or a booster for in general. Plus you are reducing their hand size in hindsight in a way. My friend David and DMOC from the Reddit definitely pointed out that he's still relevant and useful in certain matchups like I just mentioned. So shout outs to them for <laughs> keeping me and um, keeping him in mind for that reason. So uh, there are different units that you want to kill. Could be Carbon, could be Mitchells, could be Flogo, could be Barkle, could be Asha and Big Belly starters, and so on. Where if you did ride the Supreme Ruler, you can get the extra poke. But sometimes you can't either get the extra poke because you rather you would need a Sipla or another Great Three to really take advantage of that, so I can attack from the back row. Or there's something you want to really get rid of first, and that's on the field. So you would be tempted 
you probably go into the OG Talos, is what I'm saying. An example would be um, the Chaos matchup. Usually you want to definitely ride Supreme Ruler, but there might be a scenario where you ride the OG Talos. I'll give you an example. Just like the example where I said I w would go second and my board would end up clean of non-resist units, so I only have that one resist unit, which would be Melania or Orphea. When you go first try, you can go ham. And so thus, you can get to the fourth battle. And if you're attacking any rearguards they have in the front and they only have carbon in the back row, then you'll get to retire carbon. Thus, when they go to their turn, they have to work with what they got. They can't use carbon to search for like Metonix or Zinc or Bolt Line and, and etc. And if they're on Chaos Universe, they're only going to lock on one circle in the front row. They could try with Globalidia, but it might be hard depending on how much counter blast they have and how many copies of that card they actually have too. Then you follow up with your turn back and you have one front row locked, one open. So you can do basically stride into Lambros a second strike because you have Gaphelion and Alexandros flipped face up from your first strike turn. Then you can use Gaphelia to unlock the other front row. So now you have a front row that's fully open. And you are still GB2. So thus, you can still use Lambros. And what, you're asking, why would you use Lambros that early on, or even in that matchup? Is that if you can use Lambros, it's probably the only time you get to use Lambros too. Other than that, you're going to have to rely on Alexandros and Command the Falas and even Wailing Falas to do your turns later on. And so if you can save your Command the Falas or an Alexandros turn later on, you will greatly appreciate it and it will come in the long run. Especially with Alexandros, because you are going to flip something else with Lambros, right? It flips the copy of itself. So thus, when you go to the Alexandros turn, it's going to be bigger. On to the grade twos. So some of you are probably like, holy shit. <laughs> Why the fuck four saber flow, bro? <laughs> and some of you are probably saying like, whoa, three title only? Three Adelaide only? And maybe three Cipla? I totally get where you guys are coming from, but let me explain. Saber Flow is the third and final piece of the Favos Trinity. <laughs> she is necessary for having 10 plus cards in hand, starting on first stride. And so, basically, you can call Adelaide, give the Bubble Edge skill to her, you can call Saber Flow. Adelaide's going to give you two cards from the Bubble Edge skill by herself. So that's two. Saber Flow will give you two additional cards, four. Then your Drive Check is going to give you three more, giving you seven cards in the battle phase to work with. So without, count, without not counting Orphea or Draw Triggers or even a Sipla in the back row, if you started your battle phase with three cards and you get seven new cards at the end, you're going to have ten cards. So if you have four or five, it just increments by one, right? You get 11 cards, you get 12 cards. If you see a Draw Trigger, that's another plus one. If you use Orphea on the Adelaide to give you the extra draw, that's another card. And if you have the Sipla, that's another card. So... It's very key to have Saber Flow in that scenario. You can have another scenario where you have two Saber Flows in the front row, and you have a Sipla in the back row that can attack from the back row. So the idea is that you're going to get two draw of a Sipla where she can attack the second wave and the fourth wave. So you use two counter to get two draw. Then you can use double Saber Flow that turn, giving you four new cards. So that will give you six cards. Your drive check is going to give you three more, so you got nine cards in total. And if you got something with Bubble Edge or your triggers, you get more than that. So that's really good. Um, and that usually costs three counter blasts, assuming they use two Sipla. I'm not two Sipla. You use Sipla twice, or you can use two counter blasts in the sense of Saber Flow and a Restander. Because Saber Flow's free, the Restander takes a counter blast and your Alexandra takes a counter blast. You get, you get a lot of plus out of it. And typically, against the Overlord matchup, I would call Saber Flow and Sipla in the front row, and that's it. Um, there's sometimes no point in having the back row, or at least just yet. And so thus you're trying to generate some advantage through your front row, which is using Saber Flow and Sipla. And so that way on your second and third Alexandros turns, you can keep gaining advantage, which generally you want to do in that matchup with Saber Flow, because Saber Flow at that point will be swinging like anywhere from 23k to like 28 or even... Um, 33, like big as numbers. That big of a Saber Flow still hurts. <laughs> and this will give you the inherent resist unit that 
you can give everything else with Zest Swift Supreme Ruler Scale. Allowing you to do your titles and your outlights, do the thing with the Alexandros power up. The reason I'm playing for Saber Flow is to see it. I want to see her first stride. One or two copies is perfect. That way you can get your draw engine. And also, if your bubble edge is gone from the early game, let's say Overlord just pops it with a Destiny or a Gatling Claw, having four Saber Flow makes that draw engine still live. You don't lose out a lot from that. And so making sure you're having your six draw still in your lineup and the four Saber Flow, you can still generate advantage against the Overlord matchup to keep you in the game and push for the win. After playing through the tournament, I'm definitely keeping in this ratio still. <laughs> um, so onto the other cards, such as title. I technically used to play five title, which means four title and a Benedict. And slowly I started reducing that number. It got to the point where I was one Benedict and three title. And then eventually I just took out Benedict, like I said earlier. Title, I don't try to call him as a regard early on. It's like not worth it anymore. And you'll, you're better off riding as a vanguard and then saving these cards on your first try, like I said. So you can explode and making sure you have your hand advantage. That first try turn is key. I keep saying it. <laughs> um, once you're after that, you're in the promised land. <laughs> um, title does have his worth at the late game. And boy, because he's free, you can work with Alexandros with one count or less in the late game. We're talking about like the third, third Alexandros turn or the second Alexandros turn. And then Adelaide is the one that does cause a counter blast and a soul blast. Oh, what I like about her is I'd rather use her in first stride than a title assault or supreme ruler. Mainly because they hit the 11k mark by themselves and don't lose power. So you are applying some pressure. And they are re-standard so they get the bubble edge draw. She can get Plato out of soul if you write him as grade 1, which is key. So then your next following turn, when you're probably going to PG, you'll get to counter charge. So you get to refund her cost, essentially, or Alexandra's cost, whatever you want to call it, but you're refunding the seat, um, kind of less. So this is even great on the Alexandra's turns later on. It it doesn't lose power. <laughs> a 51k Adelaide restands again for another 51k. And then if you use Orphea, she's only going to lose 5k, becoming like a 46k beater, which is huge as hell. <laughs> Sipla is really good. She has the Inherit Resist and is 11k base as long as you have the Thavas Vanguard. So having the full grade 3 lineup as Thavas, she's always guaranteed that, which is great. This is really good, just like ZTV has gotten their grade 2s that are inherently 11k by having the Chrono Jet name. And I was like, man, Aqua Force can really use that, and we finally got one. It's also a grade 2 slot that is actually good to play with Resist to deal with Kagero, Gears, Narukami, all those Chi guards that are nasty or units they use. And thus, we can actually rely on her because her skill is very, like Melania, very similar, where you can counter blast and draw a card. So in a way, she replaces herself. Her wave requirement is from two to the fourth wave, so she can trigger on the third wave as well. And you can do this multiple times. It's not once per turn. Just like I mentioned earlier, you can use her twice in a turn to get two draw if you really want to. She's very key in certain matchups too. Like I said, she's key in Overlord. She's key in Chaos. She's key in Gridora, where you can put her in the background and she's 11K by herself, and then you restand her with Alexandros. She's a beat stick still, like 21K, 31K, etc. Whatever number of amount of G units you have face up. And she could be a constant 11K poker too in the back row on Alexandros' turns. So if you have like a Saber Flow and an Adelaide, you could have her in the back row where. Basically, you can poke, poke Alexandros, restand these two, and then for the fourth, you can have poke for an 11k. Whether it's a rear guard or the vanguard if they're still 11k base, it's just another card that they have to drop or they take the damage. So that's useful. Also, if you put her and a 7k booster together, she gets plus three, and so she's 11 already, so she becomes 14k. 14 plus seven makes the 21k column. So if you do that in the early game, it makes your opponent drop 15k shield to actually guard it or they take it. And thus, after the Alexandros, that power up is going to be so fucking huge, they're going to drop a lot of cards anyway. <laughs> so you might as well use that skill pre-Alexandros and make them drop an extra card or two.
On to the grade ones. So we have four Play-Doh. Counter charging is even more needed in this new support that we just got in GPT-13. So definitely Play-Doh is key. I've been playing Play-Doh since GPT-02. I just got uh, used to the fact that if I call a regard, I'm just gonna lose it. And so I should rely on more of me making sure I have combo pieces for the next turn or drawing into it, usually like Saber Flow or draw triggers and so on, right? So he's really uh, nifty right now. So you can use that instead of Gophelia to counter charge. He's also the ideal grade one target that you wanna ride. So that way you can sell blast it on first stride. And so you'll counter charge immediately as well. For Nikki, the stride fodder. SPs. <laughs> um, you want to search for the right Thawas for the right scenario in the matchup. Uh, typically, you could also do, you can search for a second Supreme Ruler, and that way you could discard something useless like a draw trigger, and then you keep that. And so when you go into first stride, you can drop another grade three or another stride fighter and have that Supreme Ruler rear now get that plus two from Bubble Edge as well. I play seven grade threes and four Nikki, thus equaling to 11 cards uh, to use to pay for the cost of stride. And it's been working out great. So I'm keeping that ratio. Three Melania. Melania is very important. She has resist and can draw you a card, just like I explained with Sipla. She has a wave ability, so she can attack from the back row using ruler skill. And that can be very key in matchups such as Overlord and Chaos and Ghidorah. And also she's key Put in on the front row with another unit such as title that gets resist in the overlord matchup so that way you're still getting your advantage and still pushing orphea is a card that i've been using since gbt02 stopped using when the clan booster came out and now we're back to using her in gbt13 in thalas at least she has resist so she's useful in control matchups she's a constant booster she can get the extra drop off a of bubble wedge she can soul blast plato from the soul if you were to write them. She makes anything a restander on Alexandra's turn. She makes a restander attack a third time on Alexandra's turn. <laughs> really strong on the second and third Alexandra's turns too. We're talking about like 51k Adelaide abuse. <laughs> um, so she's fantastic. And some of you are probably questioning like, why aren't you playing four of this or three of this? Again, since I'm playing Saber Flow and this draw engine, I get CC all my cards. So having at these ratios are just fine for me. It's been working out great. Onto the G zone. Three Alexandros. Holy shit. <laughs> He's a very good card. He's easy to get off since he is a two to third wave requirement. He gets stronger every turn and or G guards use on your turns. My friend David mentioned that Alexandros is a vanguard that enables your regards instead of the reverse. Where before you used to use rear guards to get to Lambros or to Wailing to enable your turn. So your rear guards were enabling your Vanguard to do something. But now Alexandros is really doing the reverse, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, nine times out of ten, you're going to flip Gophelia. So that way you can use her to counter charge or unlock if needed and when you need it. Will definitely be used against the Chaos matchup. So definitely pro. It makes Restanders and Saber Flow really good to use. The fact that Saber Flow was a card that required the fourth battle to attack was hard before unless you did a Lambros turn. You can get away sometimes with a Commander Phallus turn, but now with Alexandros, you can call it in another regard and that's it. That's all you need. <laughs> it's fantastic. And nine times out of ten throughout your games, you're going to stride into him because he's that good. I haven't felt like I needed a fourth one, and I think three is just perfect. Two is not enough. I've gone to the third Alexandros various times, and those are the turns where you're really swinging big and going for the finishing turn. Especially, how's your opponent gonna guard anywhere from four to six or four to five attacks that are like over 40k and up? It's hard. <laughs> so, yeah, on to Lambros. Lambros is still useful. It could be used as a first stride if you G guard it, so there is that option, saving you and Alexandros for later on. And a Carno Blast potentially. If your opponent denies you CB, a ZT player that I faced in the event did that to me after my first stride. So I only had Alexandros and Gaphelia face up. So going into my turn, I had no CB. I went into Alexandros. 
use Gafilia to give me a CB because I had no other cards to counter charge. And thus I did a Lambros turn that way. And I used a card like Adele to get to the fourth battle. Now onto Command of Thalas. Command of Thalas is useful in the Chaos matchup. Scenarios may come out when you're either out of CB or you need Gafilia to unlock instead of counter charge. And so you may have to go into Command of Thalas to have something attack on the back row or just get another attack. And having the extra attack on the back row, back row may actually come up. So he also can help you with wonky turns sometimes. I mentioned before in my C CFA playtesting that I had all triggers and I only had Orphea. And I just put up Mal Malika in front of the Orphea. I luckily got three triggers <laughs> in my Vanguard drive check. Stacked them to Malika. Malika already has the plus five from Command of Thalvis' scale. And Malika was hitting numbers and was able to resign with the Orphea. So you can do some wonky turns and actually do some pressure or some advantage gaining as well. And sometimes you can get the GB3 off where you can retire another card. So it's one way to retire cards if you're not on the OG Thalvis. Or if you're on the OG Thalvis, then you retire two cards. So there's that benefit. Um, Wailing can come up sometimes, but I hardly go into him. Situations um, can happen when your opponent is low in damage and is there in the mid game, and this can actually help you out more by getting rid of their field, um, by also making sure cards, uh, not the cards, decks like Luard and Battle Sisters, for example, where they're relying on the rear guards. So if you keep blowing up their field, they have to keep replenishing it. And if you do that against Luard, you get to deny their stride skill because they need to kill something to get that off. It can also be handy against Overlord and punishing the back row if they commit to it as well. And they will probably use their G guard as well to do the the one that kind of blasts and gets like 10k for every open regard circle. So that way they can try to, try to actually guard Wailing. Megiddo. So, <sighs> I have not got into him during the event. I considered it twice, but Alexandros was still the better play in those scenarios. If you're really behind, like barely surviving, this could help, especially if you only have the one card to stride with, and it so happens to be the same copy as your Vanguard, then you can ultimate stride and have a field. Get six attacks at least, and it could win you the game. The main thing that I really wanted in for was against Kagero because of Drachma. It's a good way to come back from a Drachma turn. So if they do that to you and you're stuck, anything less than a grade three as well, you could still perform ultimate stride regardless of what grade you're on. You could be on a title assault, you could be on a supersonic sailor if you want to be. As long as you can pay the discard of the copy of the Vanguard and have GB3 still, you can ultimate stride. So it almost feels like it's a unnecessary evil to have in those scenarios. So definitely keep for the keep the Megiddo for sure for those kind of matchups. And later on where a lot of decks are gonna like knock hand out of you. <laughs> so this can come up. So Breeze I still use because Stavos is one of those decks that actually can go off in a Sea Breeze turn. You can use Saber Flow, you can use Tidal to not use any counter blast and you just need two counter blasts to work with. If you have the third counter blast, then you can use Sipla and Adele and you can start doing some pressure and Again, if you have Bubble Edge and Saber Flow in the mix, you get to draw cards on a Sabrina's turn on top of that. While your opponent's at grade 2. So that's big. Now it's on the G guards. So I'm playing 2 Ice Barrier. Ice Barrier has come up more often now because there are some decks that like to swing Vanguard first, such as Chaos and Gradora with 12 crit, Overlord with no stands, and can help against the Mirror on Alexandra's turns, where the 4 for more battles are going to be huge. <laughs> So having the second Ice Barrier helps a lot. Uh, Iona's kind of gets rarely used. Um, I really use it as shield. Sometimes it's hard because one, Overlord can get rid of your field. Um, your field can disappear because of Petros and Saber Flow. That's just what they do. And it's also one counter blast. So it can hinder your next turn on Alexandros. So only use it if you're able to counter charge with Refit, the heal. And because you're able to do that, it flips another G guard on top of that, making your Alexandra's turn an additional 10k for the next turn instead of the plus 5k with a regular G guard. With two Gaphelia, you use the first one to be flipped by Alexandros nine times out of ten, so that way you have it available to you at all times to counter charge or unlock, depending on the matchup. 
it's nice to have that requirement of the second and third to get the plus five because it fills in the gap that Ice Fairy had. And Floria was not great, and we had this third wave opening that made us weak in a sense, but at least she can compensate with an additional 5k, at least for that wave. To be honest, Aquaforce kind of has shit G guards <laughs> for defense when you really need them in um, certain situations. I mean, Grand Blue has Negronora, for example, and that's generally a 30k G guard on her own anytime. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> nothing much else to say about that. And then Rectome. So some of you are probably asking, like, why you don't play no Dismal, man? <laughs> Dismal can protect your rear guards. I, I totally get that. I know that. But if I'm drawing, like, a bunch of cards and my hand size is 10 to 15 cards in hand, then I don't need to protect the rear guards. They serve as my intercepts. And so, thus, there will be times where I wanted to, I needed a G-guard, but not into the benefit of these G-guards. So having Rectum, having the option to dig an extra card deeper into your deck, and discard an extra grade 3 you don't need, an extra draw trigger you drew, it just can make turns when you follow up. Making an Alexandra's turn more bunkers, or certain other plays. And just try it out, and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> so all I gotta say is that I really loved how the deck performed at the event. I'm very happy with the build, and I don't see myself making changes, at least for the next Era G event in Chicago coming up soon. Um, the fact that my opponents just gave me looks like, whoa, how do you have such a big hand and you're applying all this pressure on me, which is great. I was able to 2-0 some opponents, some opponents I had to go to game 3, but overall, the deck performed amazing. If you guys have any more questions and or doubts, such as for Sable Flow, 6 Draw, or the Bubble Edge, and other ratios, feel free to ask. I'm happy to explain more and help out. Also, to worth note, both my friends Miguel and Eduardo made it to top 8. So three of us were in top 8, and that is really awesome. <laughs> um, proud of those guys for making it to top 8 as well. And I will be doing their deck profiles as well in the next time I see them. Uh, Miguel played Overlord, and Eduardo played Big Belly, so look forward to those. My next video will be my tournament report, so look forward to that as well. I will be going more in depth with my matchups, uh, my highlights of games and scenarios that I overcame. And amigos, like the video, comment down below, share with your friends, subscribe, and hit that bell button to get notified for instant notifications. Thank you, and goodbye. See ya.